All right, guys, welcome back. And tonight I want to do a little quick video. Uh, this one has to do with laser maintenance. I get a lot of people asking me, how often do you clean your honeycomb? How do you know when to clean your honeycomb? Uh, how do you clean your honeycomb? And so I wanted to do a video, and it's going to all be about honeycombs. Because as much as I use my machines, as much cutting as I do, that is a battle that I have to fight on a regular basis. And I've used most every means that you can come up with to try to keep my honeycomb clean enough for operation. Now, keep in mind, guys, this you're not wanting to eat off of it. It doesn't have to be that clean. Uh, but there's a few things that you will start to notice once it gets to the point to where it definitely needs cleaning. And also, there's no such thing as too clean. So the more you clean it, the better. But uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go over kind of the telltale signs of when you definitely need to be cleaning your honeycomb and some of the different options and processes that you can use to do that. So if that's something you're uh, into, stick around. We'll be right back. All right, guys, so you, you all know that I do a lot of laser engraving, laser cutting. I make uh, all types of things for different customers, individuals alike, uh, as well as businesses. And sometimes I just don't take the time to clean the, the, the honeycomb the way I should. A lot of times it's just a little quick in and out. I don't put a whole lot of effort into it. But there comes those times when it's like you can't put it off anymore. It needs a good, thorough cleaning. Now, one of the... Well, I guess there's two main indicators that you're going to notice. Uh, if your machine is always running, you know, fairly clean, the smoke's not that bad, and then all of a sudden it seems a lot smokier, there's a lot more smoke in the air inside your enclosure during cuts and stuff like that, uh, then that's one sign. And the reason is, is because... When you have a clean honeycomb, what happens is when the laser pierces through the material, it comes out the back, uh, assuming you're running air assist properly, it's going to press all of that, you know, debris and gunk and those heated uh, saps and glues and all those things are going to kind of be vaporized and they're going to be blown down into the honeycomb. Now, the honeycomb, being this really thin pieces of metal that are underneath the workspace, typically is going to wind up catching a lot of that because as it passes by that that honeycomb it is going to cool down and it is going to re-solidify in the form of this tar black brown looking mess okay uh, and it's going to solidify on the honeycomb and that's supposed to happen that actually keeps a lot of those vapors traps and keeps them from just like circulating inside your machine and keeps everything running a little bit cleaner now when you do like I do, and I'm guilty, guys. <laughs> I am guilty a lot of the time. When you do like I do, and you try to get as much time between cleanings as you can on your honeycombs, that's when you start seeing that even when you're cutting, it seems like you're cutting three times as much material because there's so much, just so much of that vapor flying around everywhere. And the cause of that is because as the laser goes through the material, not only is it vaporizing the material that's in the cut, but it's also vaporizing the material that's stuck to your honeycomb. And so that material is just getting vaporized and hardened vaporized over and over and over. And it creates layers of gunk that if you look at this honeycomb, one side of this has been cleaned and one side of it has not. Care to guess which is which? <laughs> yeah, guys. So that's not how you want to do it. Okay, a lot of people, how often do you clean your honeycomb? And the truth is for me, if I've got jobs backed up, not as often as I should, like this week when I'm trying to reset before I get another wave of jobs coming in and everything, I'm trying to go through and do some maintenance, get caught up on some other stuff. That's when I shut everything down, clean, clean the honeycombs, and get them back ready for service. So that's going to be sign number one. If your exhaust is operating the way it's supposed to be, and you start noticing that you got way more smoke inside your enclosure than normal, and, you're in, and your honeycomb is black and brown and got color all over it you probably need to you probably need to go ahead and be cleaning that uh, and a second sign that you'll you'll pick up on and this is a job that i did earlier and this is when i decided that it was that time 
you'll start getting a lot on the back side of your material. Not only will you get flashback, but you'll start getting a lot of soot on the back of your cuts. More than usual, uh, a lot of charring and soot and that type of thing. So if you start seeing those two things together, then definitely you probably need to take that thing out and go ahead and put it and clean it up and just quit putting off cleaning it because that's what I have to do. Uh, now, as far as the cleaning process, guys, there's a lot of different things that you can use. Any kind of heavy degreaser, whether it be, you know, oven cleaner, uh, like engine degreaser. There's a lot of things out there that you can use. Some of them aren't as environmentally friendly as others. So, you know, be responsible about that, whether you're, you know, outside or, you know, near a water supply or water source or whatever. But the best way that I have found to get them as clean as I can is my little pressure washer. Uh, sometimes I don't use a pressure washer because it's a lot of trouble to go drag the pressure washer out, set it up. Sometimes I just use old-fashioned scrub brush, uh, some car wash stuff, and uh, the water hose. That'll get some of it, but it's not going to get a lot of that baked on, really charred stuff. Uh, so you'll see uh, up here in just a second, I'm going to kind of walk you through the process of how I go about it. So I use my DeWalt little electric uh, pressure washer. And keep in mind, guys, this thing is not a big gas powered 12,000 PSI pressure washer. If you have one of those pressure washers, use caution because this is a really, piece of, a really thin piece of metal. And if you go too high with the pressure, you could damage it. Now, I've used mine enough on honeycombs that so far the metal, the steel honeycombs, I haven't damaged any of those i haven't tried it with any of the aluminum ones uh, because aluminum is a lot softer i would be very careful if you're doing this with an aluminum uh, honeycomb especially but you should have several different nozzles you can start out kind of high and work your way down just to see what how abrasive you have to be to get it clean but i'll uh i use uh, the purple cleaner that goes in the uh, pressure washer kind of spray that stuff on there let it sit for a few minutes and then just go back at it with the pressure washer sometimes depending on how long I procrastinated, it takes a few passes to get it clean. Now, the one thing that I will tell you is when looking at that honeycomb, you can't really pressure wash it straight on that well. So you're gonna have to do, hit it from different angles. It's almost like spray painting where you wanna come in from different angles because that way the jet of the water will hit the sidewalls of the honeycomb and get that deposited uh, crud out from in there. And so that's, it's gonna be, you know, you're gonna basically do a cross hatch and then do a 45 cross hatch. I mean, you got to go every direction, every angle. Uh, if you can't see the dirt, then the pressure washer is not going to remove it. So the way I do it is kind of like aim down the pressure washer until I see that it's really dirty and go from there. And then just change your angle, repeat, repeat, repeat until you get the desired effect. Now, there's going to be some stuff you're still not going to get off. Short of putting this thing in an oven and actually baking it with oven cleaner, I don't know that you'll ever get it back to its original pristine cleanliness. But if you remove the bulk of the material off of it, you won't have the issue of too much smoke in your enclosure with all those gases. And you also won't get near as much uh, smoke damage to the back of your materials. So like I said, oven cleaner, if you don't have access to a pressure washer, oven, clean, oven cleaner works, engine degreaser. Some folks like the uh, uh, brake disc cleaner that you can get at automotive parts houses. There are lots, lots, lots of ways uh, to clean these things. This is just what I do, how I do it, when, when, because I don't always, but when I do a deep clean. Uh, as far as the piece of metal that is up under the honeycomb, that thing is also going to catch a lot of that crud. If yours is where you can take it outside, you can use a pressure washer on that, or you can, uh, you know, take it outside and 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 sand it with a with a sander or whatever. I have found the best way to clean that is with some type of a brass brush and put it on your drill, on your angle grinder or whatever. Just knock that stuff off of there. But I will tell you that the little particulates that come off of there, if you're using anything too high speed, it's going to generate a lot of dust. Make sure you do it in a well-ventilated area or either wear a respirator because a lot of the stuff that you see coming off of that metal at the bottom is crystalline. It's like little crystals. And it's probably not something that you want to be inhaling a whole lot of. So, you know, I, I have mine affixed to the lift uh, assembly inside my enclosure. So I'm kind of limited. I leave the enclosure running so that the exhaust is pulling air out. And I just use my little uh, DeWalt cordless drill with that copper brush on there, a brass brush on there, and knock that stuff loose. 
Uh, but at the end of the day, once you get everything clean, this is what I like to see. And you don't get to see this very often here at the shack. This thing will be dirty again in, in a week and look like I never cleaned it. So we're going to show you what it looks like. There you go, guys. Now, you can see I didn't get it all because I would be there for a week trying to get everything clean. But I did get the bulk of it. I got a nice deep clean. I went in there with the vacuum, dusted and vacuumed all the dust out of there. Uh, so we're ready for business. I've got about six or seven stove covers I've got to do. Also got some cutting boards. And I have went ahead and cleaned the other enclosure as well. Uh, didn't clean the bottom part of this one as much because it hadn't been too long since I cleaned it. Once I When I swapped out the 70-watt uh, atom stack, I actually uh, cleaned the bottom plate on this one. Now, I do have on both machines about a half-inch gap between the honeycomb and that plate on the bottom. And uh, that's for airflow and to keep that uh the gases from being trapped right up against the back of the material so you can see a you can see a difference this one have not cleaned the under plate i just cleaned the honeycomb that one i cleaned honeycomb and under plate so it goes a long way to making your engraves cleaner it's safer and if you get too much of that stuff in there guys and you're not paying attention to your machine all of that tar and, and and vaporized material does increase the risk of fire so uh it's not a bad idea to keep them clean don't do like i do don't wait till this don't wait till it's gotten so bad do it uh when it needs it and just had a cat scare me uh do it when it needs it not when you can get around to it that's that's the best way it's not necessarily how i go about it all the time but for all of you that were asking and, and, and inquiring about it, I hope this helps. And I hope it helps your uh, cleanup on your jobs a little bit a little easier and help extend the life of your machines as well as cut down on the risks of fire in your shop. Until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.